uh, quarter to eight here on the program. Uh, let's uh, change tack slightly and uh, talk about uh, what happened yesterday. The Commission for the Promotion and Protection of Cultural, Religious and Linguistic Communities released a report about the commercialization of religion and the abuse of practices. The CRL Rights Commission conducted an investigation and summoned a number of religious leaders to appear before the Commission after many practices such as feeding believers rat poison, among many other stories that you and I are both aware of. All right, joining us now in studio to talk about this, we've got Toko Mkwanazi Daluva, who is the chairperson of the Commission for the Promotion and Protection of Cultural, Religious and Linguistic Communities. Good to have you. Welcome Thanks for having us. All right, let's, let's just uh, give a, a brief summary of what the findings came out of this investigation were. The broad findings were there is commercialization of religion. People you know, are being financially abused. We found that there are extreme cases of people being made to do certain things, to eat certain things, to perform certain actions that are beyond the call of, of the Bible. Mm. But most effectively, the stuff that was really shocking was the fact that people were being told to buy things like holy water, faith water, whatever, and to stop taking their chronic medication. Yeah. We've got several cases, especially older persons, where some of them have passed on, uh, believing that, you know, the pastor said, I don't need this medication, I must just buy, you know, water and I'll get better. So it's all those things where we felt people were being exploited. Yeah. In the sense that because you believe, you know, faith is a very complicated issue. Mm. There's no science in faith. You, you believe when uh, your religious leader tells you God said this and God said that and you act accordingly because you believe. And our, our point of departure is that it cannot be sustainable that when people are desperate, especially with issues of poverty, inequality and unemployment, that they are then exploited even further. Yeah. But while saying that, we must state that we found that there are those that are going, doing very good work, mm, mm. running a normal church, you know, praying for people without making them pay. And there are more of those than the other ones. Well, that, that's comforting to hear. Yes. But one of, the, one of the big things as well is, and let's just understand the logistics behind the scenes when it comes to, to being a pastor or you know, whatever it is that you are practicing uh, in South Africa. Um, all religious leaders, if I'm not mistaken, should be registered uh, by the Commission uh, for the Promotion of Protection of Cultural, Religious and Linguistic Communities. Is this correct? Right now. You don't need to register. So, so that's, there's the loophole. There's you don't the need loophole. to be registered no. anywhere. You is can be a change? pastor tomorrow. Is, yeah. which, is, which is a worry. Is, is this going to change or is it still that anybody can become a pastor? Our proposals that we've tabled in Parliament is that part of our recommendations, everyone must be registered before uh, starting a church. You must be registered with the Sarah Rights Commission you must be vetted to see if you don't appear on the register for, you know, child protection register, sexual offences register, so that we protect congregants. Yeah. And we know that people who are there are the proper people. And then you'll be registered and you must belong to an umbrella organisation, no more standalone, so that you account to your peers then your peers can monitor you like it happens with doctors, with lawyers, all other professions. Mm. What we're saying is we want to professionalize the religious sector so that people are treated like professionals. You find that the bigger, oldest churches already have that system. Yeah. If you go to the Methodist church, they already have a system where you are disciplined. If you're doing wrong things, you are monitored, etc., etc. You're trained. So we're saying be free to choose an alliance of your own, an umbrella organization. Mm. That will help you, you, you know, train you, guide you, monitor you, discipline you. Yeah. And after that, what we're saying is that you must then be in a situation where if you do something wrong, you can then be removed when your peers say you're not fit yeah. for this job. So is this, um, I mean, uh, is... 
South Africa, um, we're not immune, I mean, we're not the only country that goes through this, surely. Is this a global practice that you find that um, these ministries or pastors just pop up all over the place and, and, and in a way they're almost um, taking advantage of people and promising them things which are not necessarily true? Other countries in the continent have solved this. They've already got regulations, okay. but the majority of them are still struggling. They are where we are. We are one step ahead because we have a constitution. And our constitution talks to human dignity. It, it talks to protection and safety. Yeah. It talks to the protection of religious communities. So because we have a constitution to start with that allows us to protect people based on their religion so that they are not exploited, we can then build. And all we are saying when we tabled our report to Parliament is that we need them to adopt the report or to take it to the High Court for review if they've got things they don't like in it. Yeah. But once they, they do that, we're saying we need to amend our legislation so that it allows us to tighten the system. And we're now waiting for Parliament. Yeah. And as soon as Parliament says so, we'll be tabling the, the relevant amendments and then saying, let people register, let's monitor the system, let's tighten up everything, let's make sure that people are not exploited. Could there be um, uh, legal repercussions, obviously, if you're not registered and this does go through Parliament, everything comes through. What are the repercussions if you set up a tent and you profess to be a pastor and you're going to cure everything, just give me your money, drink this debt all and you're sorted? I mean, what's going to happen to somebody like that? The amendments we're looking at. Yeah. There will be a criminal, it will be a criminal offense. Excellent. And you will be charged criminal for doing that. Just like a doctor, if you've been struck off the roll, or if you're not registered, you can't just wake up and be a doctor. There are systems. So we're saying you will be registered and you will operate under a tight monitoring system. And then if you operate illegally, without the license to operate mm. there are criminal charges following i'm i'm quite keen now to to understand how these these guys work and i say guys because and, and please correct me if i'm wrong because I, i'm i'm predominantly seeing that it's it seems to be young men yes that are coming out and doing this was was that your finding definitely okay now i know as well that um that that a lot of them actually appeared before the commission what was their explanation behind of this you know, some of them would say, God told me to do this, mm -hmm. the majority of them. If you want me to stop doing this, then talk to God. God, if he instructs me to stop, then I'll stop. But if God doesn't, I'll continue doing what God tells me. Mm -hmm. Hence, we're saying a peer review mechanism is the best mechanism. Then your peers who are senior in your religion will tell you how ridiculous you're sounding right now. And the fact that you're bringing religion into disrepute. Yeah. I mean, I even remember an example of, of one of the pastors standing before the congregation phoning God. Yes. <laughs> that was the one of... Uh, I, I, I'd love to know what the telephone number was that he phoned. But, I mean, the, the, the reality is that people fall for this. And, and, and I go back to, to the, the, the initial conversation of exploiting people. And you find that when people are poor and desperate, they'll cling on to anything. Is, is that what you're also finding? That's definitely what we found. We had a separate process with UNISA, where we asked their psychologists, etc., to look at this phenomenon. What makes people so gullible? Mm. It's the level of desperation. The level of inequality in the country makes people feel if so and so can move so far, God has abandoned me. Yeah. So I must go to my pastor. If my pastor says, eat grass and you'll get where you need to get to, then I'll do that because I can tell, you know, uh, why is it not happening for me? My kids have gone to school and they're not getting jobs. What is the story? People get desperate and they become it becomes easy to exploit them Absolutely. because they are desperate. Just finally, as, as we end this interview, we do realize now the course of what's happening. But were, they, were, they, were any of these pastors that you spoke to, or have they been evaluated for mental problems? Well, not really. Not at all? Because there's no point of departure. You see, when we had conversations with them, 
they sound quite like reasonable people, except for the fact that what they are saying mm. doesn't make sense. But they, they are normal people, and they are making money out of it. And, you know, some of them, it's just a business. So, you know, if you can think of making money, then you must be quite sane. Yeah. <laughs> well, that leads me to a, a whole new conversation. But you know what? We wait with bated breath to see uh, how fast this can be passed and yes. how Parliament jumps onto this very quickly because there are people that being, are being taken complete advantage of. They really are. But thank you for talking to us about the, uh, the, the findings here. Tokom Kwanazi Kaluve is the chairperson of the Commission for the Promotion and Protection of Cultural, Religious and Linguistic Communities, talking to us about findings of uh, an investigation into these uh, religious leaders that uh, are perhaps not as religious as one would think and uh, bringing up fake churches and fake pastors. So let's, uh, let's have a look at that more seriously as we go along.